Two men with very different views of Friday night's debate. Mac Engel from joining us once again with Democrat, Democratic strategist and also Republican consultant Mac Makoviak. Greg Abbott, of course, is the front runner in this race. So what do you think happened on Friday? Did that change at all, Matt? Look, Wendy needed a, a, a big win here, and I think even a tie would be a loss for her. I think the Abbott folks were very pleased with how General Abbott performed. He was positive, he was calm, he was a leader, and he was very substantive on all the questions. I think he had 23 questions in this debate. Uh, he was very substantive on all of his answers. Look, Wendy's behind in this race. She had to attack. She did that. She came off very negative. I understand the Davis folks may be pleased with how she did, but I think most Texans looking at this were seeing Wendy Davis for the first time in a statewide capacity. She was just as negative in this debate as she's been in the, in the ad wars for the past two months. So, Matthew, do you think she did anything to close that gap with Abbott now? Absolutely. What Wendy showed was she was courageous, she was smart, and she was willing to go after him. It's really important that she impressed him on education, and Greg Abbott made a horrible mistake. He looked Texans in the eye and he lied to them. When, he, when she asked him why he wouldn't drop his uh, appeal of school financing, he said that he couldn't, that he was compelled to keep dragging kids and schools through the courtroom. That's simply not true. Right now, he's settling a lawsuit with Farmers Insurance, which is gutting policyholders across the state. I think Matt and a lot of Republicans have to explain why Greg Abbott lied in that debate. You know, Wendy Davis <laughs> rose to national prominence during her filibuster to stop new abortion rules. And last night, or Friday night, she went after Greg Abbott on that issue yet again. And he has shown that he is not favorable even for women to make decisions on their own in cases of brutal rape or incest. Mr. Abbott, that is not protecting Texas women. And on behalf of Texas women, I say, no thank you. Texas uh, is ensuring that we protect more life and do a better job of uh, protecting the health care of women uh, by um, providing that uh, women still have five months to make a very difficult decision. Uh, but after that time, uh, the state has an interest in protecting innocent life. Matt, do you think Win Wendy Davis picked up voters? Absolutely, and I think what's really important is that on two issues, one on public education, Greg Abbott made it clear that he was going to continue to drag kids in schools through the courthouse, spending millions of dollars to, to defend a $5 billion cut in schools, and also he again defended his position, his extreme position, that even in cases where women are victims of rape or incest, that he would impose himself and others like him in the government to decide what they do with that pregnancy. But it's still a tough it? issue, right? The abortion issue is still a tough issue for Wendy Davis in Texas. It is. That's right. I mean, Wendy Davis didn't use the word abortion in her announcement speech. She announced for this office, and that's for that reason. Look, Wendy Davis filibustered a bill that would have outlawed late, that did outlaw late-term abortion after five months. That is the law of the land. Texas is a pro-life state. We can get into to, to minor you know issues that are one percent or two percent of the problem, but ultimately. You know, Texas is a strong pro-life state. Abbott would love to fight this campaign on that issue alone from here on out, but Wendy knows that that's not strategically that's wise. That's the first time I've heard rape or incest called a minor issue. It's minor in terms of the percentage of, 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 the, of the cases. That's all I'm saying. A victim of rape and incest okay. is not a minor right, problem. Right. This right. is like being in the spin room right after <laughs> well, the debate. Yeah. You know, there was one question that Wendy Davis didn't answer, at least not directly. Here it is. Senator Davis, do you regret voting for Barack Obama? <laughs> Um, Mr. Abbott, what I am working on right now is running for governor of this incredible state. That was the right approach, just to kind of dismiss she, the question entirely? Yeah. Well, it was a throwaway question. Greg Abbott really wasted an opportunity to talk about policy. What Wendy did was then turn, around, turn it around on him and make him accountable for his failures on public education and talking about his, again, defending a $5 billion cut in neighborhood schools. You know, Davis scolded Abbott for opposing federal money to expand Medicaid. She argued that tax dollars from hardworking Texans now go to help people in other states. Here it is. Mr. Abbott is California's best friend in because he wants to continue sending our tax dollars to them. Senator Davis wants to expand Obamacare in the state of Texas, and that is the last thing that we need because Obamacare is an abject failure.
In fact, you know, many Republican governors are accepting this money. Do you think Republicans are on the wrong side of this issue nationally here in Texas? I don't think so, because ultimately this is about expanding Obamacare in Texas. And I think you saw General Abbott talk about that last night. Uh, different states are taking different approaches. In some cases, their legislatures come up with creative solutions. You've seen that in states like Arkansas and others. Texas may uh, take that approach uh, with the legislative session in January. We'll see. But listen, I, I, again, I think General Abbott was very positive, had great vision in this debate. Uh, you saw Wendy Davis continue and consistently attack him, um, which again has been her ad strategy. And so I think for, for most people, they had not seen Wendy Davis before uh, on, on statewide television. This is their first chance to see her. She was monotone. She was robotic. She was extremely negative. I don't think that's going to play well. I'm going to give you the final word for about 30 seconds. Right? Well, I think that uh, what uh, Greg Abbott did would make, made it clear that he was going to send a $100 billion, billion dollar gift bag to California and to other states with Texas taxpayers' money. That was an important difference to, to uh, point out, and Wendy did a good job of showing that she will fight for Texans, and Greg Abbott is going to fight for his donors. Thanks, and thanks for coming back, and thank you for joining us for the first time. You're welcome back anytime. Gromer is going to be one of the uh, panelists for the second and final debate in Dallas, and you can watch that September 30th at 8 o'clock on KERA and on Cozy TV. And if you're not sure how to watch Cozy at home, here's a list of where you can find it on cable systems all across Dallas and Fort Worth.